footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. It is your Week 10 preview. It's the 11th game, final game of the home and away season. Sad, sad times. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, joined as always by Bryony Dawson, who is going on four hours of sleep and potentially a lot of coffee, yes. sugar-free Red Bull and whatever else. I can only have one coffee a day. You're only, is that, Did you not know that is about that me? Is that self-implied rule? Or? No, that is my guts implied rule. Ew. Yeah, it's, it's not nice. That's, that's, fair. That. that's fair. Yeah. And over there is a guy who drinks iced coffee milk. It's the stats guy. <laughs> oh, sometimes I do not need a coffee. I, I wake up with an up Iced energy. coffee milk. Let's you. go. Boom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, those bottles of milk that's iced coffee. Mm. It's just yuck. Milk. Rocks. Like, gr- grow <laughs> no, up. I don't, I don't like them that much. Honestly, grow up, stats yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, on today's show, we've got Lily Goss from Carlton joining yes. us. That's going to be a bunch of fun. Friend of the pod. You're here for another yes. interview. I, who, I like, I really enjoy the interviews. It's why we're you here. You have the best questions. The pla- that's that's right? part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to break it right now. This coming Monday from the Adelaide Crows providing nothing goes wrong on Friday night, and goddamn Hatchard will join <laughs> the show. <laughs> Yes. We get to ask you a weird and wonderful question, and my answer to it is Anne Hatchard. Yeah. So it's like I can explain why and yeah. try not to. Do you reckon Anne Hatchard will choose herself? I don't know. Yeah. Well, because if yours is, yours she'll Anne run Hatchard through run the through door. Because yeah. you can just go boom. She'll just run through her own wall. Yeah. But I reckon she would run harder through a wall for someone else yeah. than herself. Yeah, because she's like, I don't want to do this to create damage, so we'll see what happens mm. there. Anyway, that'll be it this coming Monday on the AFLW Today show as we head into week one of the finals. Before we get into that, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow AFL Today wherever you get your good podcasts. So the AFL Today and AFLW Today, they're on the same feed. It's our men's show. Obviously, the men's show being on hiatus at the moment. I think we might do a draft show, but that's about it. Get around the YouTube, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so anytime we drop some content, you get notified and you can come watch all of the awesomeness going on here. So it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. It's AFLW Today. Can you smell it? Because footy's back. Footy's back. Footy's back. Let's go. All right. Quick fire news. It is the second week of Indigenous round for the AFLW, which is great. So some teams that wore the away kit last week will wear their home kit this week. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, love that. So I'll have a special mention about the Carlton Guernsey coming up as well because they are the only program in the AFL and VFL Every program, men's and women's, across all four, there you to go. wear it. Yeah, it's Beautiful. pretty special. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. Uh, Mitch Cleary decided to see my notes and copy them because <laughs> yeah. he released a 10-point plan to make the AFLW better. Well, yours are only five. Could've He's s- gone 10. You don't need 10, Mitch. <laughs> I, I could have sworn that I saw a great plan, you know, about 10 days ago. <laughs> Yeah, he copied a few of your ones yeah, as well. Yeah, he had the All-Australian game and then he also had the grand final in the bye weekend or final starting no, in the bye weekend. There's lots of people talking about it. I'll, I'll give it that. Yeah. Did you think that you were the only person that had those <laughs> ideas? No, though? That's no but true. I'm the only one who vocalised them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I sometimes strategize for my business. And I'm like, great idea, guys. And it's come to me in the shower. And I'm like, great idea. And then you start putting things into plan and you research how to do it. You're like, Someone's oh, my God, that, yeah. 7 million people True. have already put this in. <laughs> and it's like, that's just how I think everyone it. agrees. Longer season started earlier and finished so it doesn't get taken over by men's finals. 100%. Yep. It's retirement season, which is sad but also good. You know, people moving on to the latter stages of life and having played AFLW because yep. we are. The, the latter, latter stages, stages of, of life. life. This is a life podcast. This is a life 26. podcast. 26. <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, Gel dust pos. Uh, re- Just del pos. Just del pos. <laughs> I can't read. I'm having a stroke this morning. It's Gel del pos. I was up at 6 She's, o'clock uh, to watch Arsenal please, play the Carabao Cup. Can you just Cup. stick your tongue out yeah. and then uh, lift one on this uh, side uh, and lift one on that side? That was so funny. Uh, <laughs> okay, you're okay. All right, no What's Jess name? Del Pos. This is a great name. Yeah. So we don't want to butcher Surely it. Surely people call it JDP. Yeah. Just quickly well, get it out now. there. They will now. They will JDP. Now. <laughs> yeah, retires. Uh, was an inaugural season player for GWS, player at GWS in Carlton. Was a best and fairest in all Australia in 2017. So that is a very decorated career. Yeah. Really good career. She's had a great career. She's just an awesome person as well and has just been um, really good at Carlton. So. Yeah. Uh, came out yesterday, Evie Gooch from the West Coast Eagles also retiring. Yeah, the Gooch. 43 games, pretty experienced as well. Could play really, this weekend still. Could play yeah. this weekend, so it'd be cool. Surely you're going to give her a game. Well, We're, it's the same as Dal Poss is on an injury yeah, test. In, so I reckon she, she'll really want to play, when, same as Gooch. Yeah. When West Coast have nothing to play for, player. Yeah. But they can't yeah, make okay. Yeah, It's I, one of those ones. Like It's the farewell game. Like Dyson Heppel got it against the Brisbane Lions yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Same thing. Uh, in sad news, they finally confirmed Daisy Darcy did her ACL. I mean, 
it took to Wednesday. I think we could have figured that out on Saturday. Mm-hmm. That sucks to see. Yeah. Lucy Single is also out this week. So Gold Coast are in a bit of Barney Against Rubble. Against North, which we'll touch Barney on. Barney Rubble. Oh, yeah. Rubble. <laughs> that is big uh, trouble. Kate Hoare is a test for the Demons, which is a concern. Obviously, was a laid out last week and they need to win. Yep. Elise Sheeran was cleared to play after intentional umpire contact was, was downgraded. That but was... the <laughs> AFL have thrown in an appeal, so that appeal is going to be seen today. Wait, I it's assume. gone again. Yes, yeah, so the AFL have appealed. The, the AFL have appealed it? Yeah. Sit down, I guys. Think it's like a it's a normal thing in the contest to push no, off. No, no, no. I don't no. think she pushed you her into the umpire. You think she pushed her into the umpire? No, nah, I don't 100%, reckon. Well, because no she's way. pushed her and the umpire's right there. It's not, I'm going to push her into the umpire, but it is intentional because you're intentionally pushing the player. But she's not in trouble for that player. She's in trouble for doing it to the umpire, which yeah, she yeah, did you're not to push someone. do intentionally. Yeah, but you've intentionally pushed someone, which is then the contact to the umpire. No, Therefore, it's inter- sorry. I, I did appreciate her comment of, well, I only gave her a small shove, so I guess I'm pretty strong. That, that's a, that's a great comment. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Geelong are having a thank you members round. So there's giveaways, pop-ups, uh, popcorn, ice cream, and a sausage sizzle all as they take on Adelaide. I might go to I wanna, Geelong. I want to go to GMH Fair. Just for all the Steph, food. My partner, Steph, goes for Geelong. We might go to Geelong. Yeah, head up. But yeah, no, free Have for- a snack. Oh, actually, it might be free for everyone, but it says thank you, members round. You're going to sign up for like a one game membership. A member. <laughs> one game membership just to get some free food. Right, Popcorn, sit. ice cream, and a sausage sizzle. That yeah. that screams to me, have a bloody great yeah. day. Get yeah. to footy get, and food. Get great. to yeah. meet our soon to be best friend, Dan Hatchart. So, like, mm. yeah, no problem with that. Uh, as said, at the top of the show, Lily Goss from Carlton is joining us on the show. And you know what? Let's get to it right now. Joining us now on AFLW today, ahead of the final round of the season, they have the potential to do the funniest thing ever as a non-Essendon fan. It is Lily Goss joining us from Carlton. Welcome, Lily. Welcome, Hi. Lily. Hi, how are you? I'm great. I'm just starting off that way because Bryony, big Essendon fan, and we'll just start with the match straight away. You have the chance to do the funniest thing ever and ruin Essendon season and, and force them to miss the finals. Surely that is just a big motivating factor heading into the weekend. I think it's definitely a motivating factor. I mean, got to worry about ourselves first, I think, but it would be always a good way to come out with a win for ourselves. And then unfortunately for them, that might be the end result. But Can I just say that <laughs> the only people that are going to ruin Essendon's chances are Essendon, yeah. okay? Funny, funny <laughs> the most true. Essendon thing ever. Yeah, f- the most Essendon thing ever. But uh, look, it's this weekend, of course, final game of the season, and we're just talking off air. It's your final training session coming up later this afternoon. Uh, How is that feeling? It's like, oh, it's all over this weekend. Like it must be hard not playing finals, obviously. Definitely. It's that weird period where you know you've got to still work hard, still put everything on the track today because you still have a game to finish off the season and you want to put your best foot forward. But then you know within 48 hours our season's done and all that hard work, you know, we are done and you have to go into the off-season. But... It is a bizarre one because everyone's – you don't want to be thinking about Sunday at all. You want to be thinking about Saturday, but then you do just think, oh, one more, here we go, get to the end. But, yeah, like we spoke about, it's been a really big season in itself, short and sweet but tiring and tough. So last one, you just got to get through really. And I heard Darcy Vessio talk during the week about – how as as a playing group and as a club as well, you've been able to really – pinpoint some key learnings um, this season, like when things are really working for you on the field, you can really pinpoint those things and you know what they are and vice versa, same when things aren't working. How important is that aspect of the game to building a really successful playing group, do you think? Oh, hugely important. I think Das is very right in that aspect that we've done a lot of work off field to be able to identify when things are going well, what it looks like, and when yeah. things are going wrong, what that also looks like. Because I think you can do a lot of reflection post games. And when you watch games back, it's much easier to see. But how do you identify those moments in a game and be able to switch your focus to what needs to be the priority? And I think long term, the more work we do on that, the more we'll be able to identify those processes in games and flip it back onto what we can do and what we can change and, you know, put us in good stead to win those games and come out on top rather than having to wait until the end of a game and review and reflect on what didn't go well. Yeah, I think it's that even you just saying that mm. then, that mid-game switch, not just the after the game, let's analyse, let's practise those things and try and put it in place going into the next game. It's that ability to flip 
mid game. And I think that shows, you know, the, the elite groups and the, and the growing potential of, of a team. Yeah, definitely. And you see those top teams in Brisbane, Adelaide North, who are able to make those switches themselves. They're not waiting for coaches to tell them where their areas are falling down, what's not working. It's You can see it in the games where things might not be going to plan and there's a switch and that intensity yeah. and that contest builds. And we're working really hard as a young group to really find that in ourselves to build upon in the future because we will get there. It's just how do we highlight and highlight and what work do we do off field for that? Mm-hmm. Is that one of the hardest things about the condensed fixture when you're playing four games in, what, 20 days and then you've also got to have days off, you need to recover? Is it hard to actually try and review stuff? It's like, oh, Oh, we got a game tomorrow. Okay, but sweet, we'll just go play. Like, yeah. how what hard day is, is that? it? Yeah. What am I doing? Who am I? Where am I flying? <laughs> well, no, absolutely. And we spoke a lot during the season about you got to absorb it, take in what we have, but then you got to forget about it. You got to move on. You got to be able to put that game behind you to go to the next one. Because if you d- dwell on things, especially for us that aren't working, you kind of get stuck in that mindset, and you got to be able to switch pretty quickly especially, yeah, four games in 16 days doesn't really allow you to it's so good. Yeah, It's just on to the next. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we do a lot of review in that, but I think the hardest thing for like me personally, you don't really get to train it. You don't get yep. to talk about train what we've spoken about. You just kind of got to try and just implement it for the next game. So with the obviously next season going to 12 games and it looks like there is no condensed fixture next year, that's sort of – it's got to be exciting. One more football, but two, it's also you're having a proper like set out schedule week on week. You're going to know where you're going and what you're doing. Looking forward, I know it's very far away now, but that must be exciting heading into next season with this group. Oh, entirely. I think any chance we get to train plot properly, recover properly, bring our best foot forward, we'll make sure a us as a team can perform the best of our ability and as a competition. Like we're not you know, running on empty or, you know, holding niggles and stuff where I don't recover properly, bring it forward. And you get time to learn, especially for a young group. Like you said, we get time to educate ourselves, learn as we go and implement it in the right time frame. I was going to take things way back, but yeah. do you want to talk about Indigenous Round while uh, we're on? Yeah, I was going to do that. Yeah, we can. We'll get footy out of the way, and then we'll go to go to off. <laughs> we the want to field. know about you, Lily. Yeah. So it is <laughs> the l- last round is this weekend. It, uh, it is the second week of Indigenous Round as well, and I think Carlton um, and I'm probably wrong on this, but that's okay. You're the only club in the land to have AFL, VFL, VFLW, and AFLW all wearing the same jersey throughout the year. And th- show it up on screen. I can see you've got it in your hands now. So you've yeah. got it down there. So this yes. has been designed by the cousin of Zach Williams, yes. Stuart James. He's from Narendra, which means he's a, a Wiradjuri man. I'm from Wagga. Same land is the Wiradjuri land. Yep. So have grown up. There's a there's actually a suburb called Wiradjuri in Wagga. Uh, this is based off the Niya Ni which comes from the Wiradjuri word meaning we all, and it encompasses a deep connection and sense of belonging and a purpose that we all as a Carlton family feel. Given it's worn across all four programs, I think that sums it up perfectly. It's beautiful. Mm. Correct. Yeah, it is all about connection for us this year. And as a club, we've really gone after it with our Stronger Together attitude and on and off field connection. So the fact that all four of us teams get to wear it is amazing. And I think it really represents our ability to embrace the Indigenous culture on Sunday and really have that connection between them and us too. So I'm very honoured to be able to wear it and I think everyone in the Carlton community has been very, very happy to be a part of it. So can't wait. It'll be great. And it is such a community at Carlton, isn't it? I've I've done a bit of work for Carlton over the years through the, the women's and the men's and there's always just a real family environment there, mm-hmm. isn't it? Definitely. Um, I think it's something we value a lot and it's something that's held us in good stead as a community for one. Um, as a team, the connection is the strongest piece and once you can get the connection off field, I think it can only grow on field. So all of us, you know, playing in the VFL for us, VFLW and getting the train-ons and the girls through that process, I think it shows how connected we are and, you know, we play for each other. So. Yeah. 
Like, That's awesome. I love how seamlessly it transitions between the away kit that they wore last week and the home kit. Like mm. both of them pop as well. Yeah. I'm a big kit guy. He's a kit guy. Big kit guy. <laughs> it's the first thing to light up. The, oh, look like. First thing to light up group chat. Is, oh yeah. Oh, kids look great. Yeah. Oh yeah, great kids. They look great together. Love great a good kids. see. That's yeah, the, kit. that's the that's one of my weird tendencies and weird things about me. Now, so that's You're so gonna, weird. I know. I'm gonna He's throw. So it, weird, I'm gonna throw it to Lily off the field. What is that one weird thing that everyone goes like, uh, oh, really? That's what you do? Oh, that is a tough question because I think I'm pretty normal. So <laughs> yeah. I don't really know what I do. <laughs> My life is pretty boring outside of footy, especially, I don't know, when it, you're working, studying, doing everything else. I don't really have any boring or exciting hobbies or quirks because all I really want to do is work. But who knows? Maybe mm. this off season this summer I can get into something exciting. <laughs> I love that you're in your work era and I love that you're doing it at your age also because I feel like I've just hit my work era um, <laughs> and I'm just turned 40. So I was going to not mention that. how old you were. Like. I'm happy. Well, I love growing old. What's the alternative? Dead. Don't want to be dead. Want to grow old. <laughs> Thanks. That's really inspiring <laughs> to everyone out there. That's that's a great. See, I'm I'm glad that Lily's studying to be uh, the teacher with the Bachelor of Physical uh, Health and Education. Yeah. Not you. I, I want to hear inspiring speeches from Lily. That's just grim. I feel I'm like I'm growing you, too. Yeah. I'm growing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's they'd be like before PE, like, go on, kids, try your best. Not, oh, you should do it or you'll die. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, be physical, so. Great. That's great. I'll take some lessons from you, Lily. Yeah. Uh, so you played uh, some footy in the VAFA with uh, Mimi Hill and you also went to school with her. So coming up together and playing together must be a bunch of fun. Oh, it's so much fun. It's one of those um, kind of world of moments where I don't know if you guys ever had it, but when you play with someone so often that when you then get to play with them again, you know exactly how that, they play. That's my favourite thing about playing with Mimi because I've known her since she was, what, 14. So... I grew up with her, played with her as juniors and then walked through school and then VAFA. So it's a lot of fun being able to just do what we do and have fun. I showed on Vic Park, we were talking about it last week actually, all through COVID when I wasn't playing VFL or AFL. We'd go every week, we'd kick it Vic Park, try and kick snags, try and do anything. And then for playing last week against Collingwood there, we were a bit like, oh, my God, this is such a flashback. Let's just do what we used to do in lockdown every now and then. So it's great fun. You've got. All right. I've got a final question for you, Lily, and this is something we ask um, everyone on the pod. Now that you're a friend of the pod, we're going to give you a scenario, and we're going to ask you who you would most likely choose from your team to help you out, and who you would least like um, asked. Okay, so you wake up. It's grand final day. Carlton are in the grand final. You wake up. You've got no idea where you are, and you get. You're in this room. You go to walk out of the room and the door handle comes off and you cannot get out of this room. You've got no idea what you're going to do. You look at your phone to go and call someone and you've got 1% battery. You've okay. got like 10 or 15 seconds on this call to get someone to come and help you. Otherwise, you can't play in Carlton's grand final. Who are you calling from your team and who are you definitely not calling from your team? I'm definitely not calling Mia Austin. <laughs> She'd also be late. Yeah. Probably in the same issue, having the same issue. Yeah. And she lost her license, so she probably can't get there. Yeah. And then Boss. <laughs> and then I probably would definitely call Harriet because she'd break down the door for me. And yeah, me there you go. He you. went down a full, he would call Ann Hatchard. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. awesome. And I don't think we could think of a better way to end the interview. That's great. Carlton Essendon, this Saturday night at Icon Park in the Indigenous Guernsey in Indigenous Round. A big thank you for joining us today. All right. How good is that? Lily Goss. Now best friend of the show. Yeah, love Gossie. She's yeah. good. I, I'm so glad you're not my school teacher though. Like just oh. honestly. The <laughs> le oh yeah, right. The least inspiring, <laughs> most grim no, thing ever. I don't really think it's that grim. I think it's like She's you just know, living so life many to the, people, to the fullest. Yeah. especially women, like complain about getting older because they're judged on their looks and blah blah blah. But what is the alternative? Yeah. Win the lottery and hang out. <laughs> That's not the <laughs> alternative. <laughs> what I mean, is the opposite no, Brian, to growing I know old? What you're saying. I, know yeah, what you're no, saying. I get it. But I like it. Just like oh, just keep doing stuff or you'll die. Like, honestly. <laughs> Great one. Good motivation for the kids. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy right with on, it. Love right yourself, on. folks. Yeah. Love yourself.
All right, let's rip into these game previews. Of course, Friday night, GMHBA Stadium. We'd mentioned it earlier. Geelong have the thank you members night as they take on Kiwana, which is the Adelaide Crows. So Kiwana need to win this to absolutely guarantee themselves top four. And Geelong are just like, ah, yes, we might win another game. How are we feeling about Geelong and and their ability to play another really get good game of footy. I'm just going back to kick a goal against Carlton. That's going to be my just go-to for the whole season. If they, might, if they win this, technically they can miss finals provided Nam and the Bombers lose because they got a better yeah, percentage well, than think, Essendon. I don't think Mel, uh, Nam or uh, the Demons are going to lose to the Pies. You I, never I, know. I, that's we, the thing. But, I don't think they're going to lose. No, to but them. Geelong have a sneaky chance. They, that's true. They do have Geelong a have chance. a sneaky. Yeah. Well, but, this is what's going to annoy me about the tips I just saw, that I was going to have this as my sneaky one, but we'll have a, have a quick look at that. Because, yeah. uh, we didn't talk about the tips, actually, Alex, that Bryony and myself are uh, tied at the top. Yeah. So we might have to do a few risky ones. You're, uh, four behind. Four, that's not too bad, but you're going to have to do a few I risky keep, ones. Well, see, my problem is I've tipped the Swans, I reckon, eight times. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> except, your, for the North Mel- except for like North Melbourne, Brisbane, and one other That game. has cost you at least that's, four or five well, that's games. Cost, that's, <laughs> yeah. cost, that's cost me the win. That's it. That's cost you the win. <laughs> but, what are you doing, mate? And then there was, I think there was, I tipped Gold Coast against Essendon. Like, yeah. That was just I still, emotion, emotional tip. That was waiting for Essendon to do, with it, do an Essendon. Yeah. 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 How are we feeling about this, though? Because... Adelaide or Kiwana, they're still, like we said, it. if they play to their best against North Melbourne, they probably win that game. Yep. Just going to kick a bit they're straighter. Like, I, as I've said all year, they're like, yeah, they're going to make finals. They're, they are waiting for next week. They are waiting for November. They'll want to have a bit of momentum. I know that that's in all sports. You don't want to like have a crap last week because it happens in sports where they rest some players or they, they do that. And then they come into finals a bit underdone. You still want to give it your best shot, go really yeah. hard at it, especially beating Geelong because they'll be like, all right, Geelong... It's actually a really good team. So if we beat them, get, take a bit of confidence into finals. I, I think, yeah, they'll be fired up still. Would, yeah, well, so, they're, they're going up against the leading goal kicker in yeah, the competition. And, the goal kicker, yeah. and they found a little bit of form. I don't yeah. want to jinx Geelong, but they have found a little bit of yeah. form. Um, like what you said before, they need to kick straighter. Yes. Adelaide. If you're going to be. They got a lot of chances if you're on gonna, goal. Yeah, they mm. did. I think at one stage last week, they were like two goals eight, Ugh. you know, and so they just. That that Danny Alponta and Gould need to really like yeah. step up and really get some goals on the board. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and this could just be the PS de resistance for Ebony Marinoff's home and away season. Just Unbelievable good. season, leading leading disposals in the league, kicks, tackles, and then second in clearances to Rowbottom, who's just doing it all for Gold Coast. She's just doing it all, and tackles. By the way, it's just gone through the roof yeah. this year. I think yeah. it's about 11 or 12 average, which is four more than everyone yeah, else. Like, crazy. When crazy. she's Amazing. having 41 disposals and also laying 17 tackles, it's like, why not have both? Yeah. It's Ebony Marrow. Nice. Um, how are we feeling about this? Because obviously we've got the leading goal kicker for the Cats who's trying mm-hmm. to extend her lead and hold off Taylor Maloney, Smith. yeah. Maloney's mm. been awesome. Mm. And not only that, she's getting like 18 disposals a game as well, which is unbelievable yeah. for a tall forward. Yeah. yeah. So good. Mm. But the Irish. They rely... A little bit too much on uh, her. They need Bowen to kick a couple. Like well, Bowen, Bowen always chips in with one and sets up a couple. Yeah, but Bowen's maybe been two. really good. Yeah, and yeah. She just needs to have another great game yep, to I be agree. able to. I think ha- the like Kawana are beatable here. Yep, they are beatable. If Geelong show up like they have been, and yep. you know they're they're uh, reliable players, step Chris up. Chris Parker yeah, jumps yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Nina Morrison. Like if you piece it all together, Geelong. Kawana are beatable and you can do it, yeah. which is why I think I've picked a lot. Oh. Okay, because well, I was going to say, the big question is, you don't look at the ladder, just having watched the teams for last month, is this game tougher to predict than you think? Yes. yes. That's what I, yeah, I chucked that in there. And Adelaide uh, need a win for top four, as yep. well, which is, mm. makes it even bigger. I was going to tip Geelong as well, <laughs> but because uh, we're, Bryony we're got equal. in first, we're equal. I was 50-50 on this one, so I'm going back to Adelaide. I... Yeah. There's part of me that was worried about Geelong. Can they actually be consistent? No. They haven't done it all year. So the fact that they've got a couple of wins in a row, this is where they crumble again. So I think Adelaide are going to win this one by about 10 points. Just going to go down with Hill, Kiwana, get the job done. Yeah. yeah. The Crows. Yeah. Marinoff, Gould, Ponta. I feel risk. It feels risky. I've, like, I've got, I've got, Maddie, I've, I've got Maddie, <laughs> Maddie Newman on the open expanses of GMHBA Stadium because also remember how elite their, their field kicking is. Yeah. They're in a stadium. Yeah. They're in a stadium. None of this wind bull crap they've been getting for the last <laughs> wind month. Wind bull crap. <laughs> wind bull crap. <laughs> Shake harder, boy. <laughs> so, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll tip the crows. Saturday, Icon Park, 105 p.m. So there's a double header, technically speaking, at yep. Icon Park this Saturday. Yes. That's 105 cool. p.m. in a 7.15 game. 
Why not do it at 3.15 They should have done it back straight after each other. Come yeah. on, guys. What are we doing? Yeah. Anyway, Nam, aka the Melbourne Demons, take on Collingwood. Collingwood season, they're just like, thank God this is ending. <laughs> and the Demons are just like, <laughs> probably. probably. We, could, we could play finals here. Yeah. The Ds win this. They give themselves the best possible chance to play finals. They strong will, percentage. Not a strong. To, compared to. Essendon, their percentage sucks, Stats oh, guy. I'm, I've, I'm thinking of a different team. That's Because okay. they got beaten by 70 points by Essendon. It's, oh, yeah, it's I forgot about Geelong that. who've got the better percentage it's, over Essendon. Yes. So, it's like close to. I was close oh, yeah, to under sorry. 100 yeah. for I was a thinking while. of Geelong. Nah, I'm genuinely going to need to win this like 80 to 6 to try and get close to the percentage. And you know what? So they'll, they'll only be able to do it if they get their percentage up. Well, no. So they. They, if Essendon the lose, yeah. then they're in. Yeah, yeah. yeah if their they percentage lose. is seventy five. Yeah, I, I forgot. I thought yeah. I was thinking of but it's, it's Yata Pulte, so Port Adelaide that have got that have got with the uh, not having a draw. They've Essendon's got a good draw percentage. might save them. So now I'm have to, they genuinely have to win this by like over a hundred points and hope uh, that the power get pumped. Yeah, or it's just win. win no, but win and Essendon lose. lose is is their yeah. best scenario. But if probably. Essendon yeah. win, yeah, it's there's a lot. There's when you're relying on math yeah, and other results. In not saying good. that, not though, good. they're going to win this by they a lot. They could still win this by a lot. Like, Kate Hall's still a doubt with a hamstring, but, you know, Liv Purcell's finally found some form after a couple of games back. She yeah. looks ready to go. Could there be some heavy legs after the trip away last week? Uh, possibly, yeah. Actually, in the tough conditions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Once they tell, just say more hot and sweaty. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Melbourne have always been a pretty um, fit team. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they do. They do have a lot of um, young people in the side and experience in the side as well. So yeah. you know, uh, I think they're going to go out and give it their best. If, but yeah. The other it's, this is before the big question. But if uh, Kate Hall's fifty fifty to play, do you play yes. her? Of course you play. You have her. to play her. I'm just saying because they're going to get a win, I reckon, without Kate Hall. And if they win and make finals, and then Kate Hall can't play the first final, I know I'm thinking way too far here because they haven't even made finals yet. Yeah. But is it just because they got to win? They got to play their best team. They've got to play their best but team. I think they lose next week anyway. So oh, Kate, at, Kate at eighty is better than anyone else yep. at hundred. Okay, just yep. just sit her in the goal square. No. Oh, okay. Oh, on the goal. Yeah, nah. yeah. yeah. Oh, push her up a little square. bit more. Push half up forward, a little half bit forward. more. Yeah. If, if you're getting beyond sixty meters out from goal, you're on holiday. Just <laughs> stay back there. Keep <laughs> like, that hamstring. I don't mind that actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Keep that hamstring in as good as Nick as you can possibly hope. Yeah. No sprinting, because Kate. Because this lets Bannon get up the ground, and she can use her pace to get out the back. And then if you've got Kate Hall leading out of you from full forward. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. Kate doesn't even need to take the mark. She can just clear the space and yeah. let get the Bannon, crumbs, bring yeah, it to ground. Yeah, get Bannon onto that one. Bannon yeah. has been so good. I reckon she's going to have a field day here. I might yeah. get into that in my big calls. She's had ten scoring shots the last two games. Yeah, just needs to yeah. straighten up a little bit. Four goals, two, and then one goal, three last yeah. week. Yeah, was will be a lot easier conditions this week though. So yeah. I reckon she'll kick. A, a just bag. needs to have that killer instinct that I said on Monday show. Like yeah. if she gets that bit of anger and that killer in her. Yeah. Could be up in the top five players. Yeah, the she does. She does get up and about. She's yeah. taken a while to roll up this season. Confidence player. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, I don't think Collingwood's poor defensive structure, pressure, inability to kick yeah. it out of their defensive fifty. Like it's going to be tough. They'll bring the pressure really early, tough. which they always do. Always. But they need to you know, somehow take that into the second half to have a chance here because yeah. they they drop off or they. Because they're so pressure filled, they mm -hmm. get a bit tired. Yeah. I think in the yeah. second half, fourth and Melbourne can play pressure footy. They yeah. are fourth for points conceded this year, Collingwood. So that's like, how bad they're going. Yeah, yeah. which and is not horrible when considering they're last. But yeah, fourth. Yeah, year, but it's yeah. twenty points separating first and fourth. Yeah, so. true, true, true. <laughs> not that many. Um, so well, you just you, if you're Collingwood, you're just like, all right, let's just throw everything at it, and like it's just all all offense because you're not going to contain Melbourne. Just yeah. try and kick yeah, a score. Yeah, okay. I don't mind that. Just run. It's like, well, what, what have you got to lose? You'll be sinking tins at 4.30 anyway. So, True. Big call. Can the Ds charge into the finals? The big statement win. Uh, yes. I think so. I don't know about getting into finals because there's a lot of things that have to happen. Yeah. But they will get a massive win here, I think. Yes. I Carlton by 40. I oh, not Carlton. Bloody uh, <laughs> Nam by 40. I'm Nam. looking at Icon Park. Nam <laughs> by 40. Nam by 40. Nam oh, by 36. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go 30. Yeah. Henson Park, 3.05 p.m. My beloved Sydney Swans taking on Wallatij Marara, a.k.a. the West Coast Eagles. Wallatij Marara. Yeah, beautiful. <sighs> Been working on it. Been yeah, it's really good. It. And they, it's quite a flowy language, yeah. isn't but it? But you can, you can very easily twist your tongue on the second one. If I've got it wrong, I do apologise. I'm trying my best. Yeah, no, you've done well. Uh, this is a game that nothing matters, honestly. This Duh. Is, no, but it doesn't because <laughs> both, team, both teams can't play in finals, obviously. Uh, yeah. Last meeting between the two, the Swans won by 13 points. Uh, the Eagles... Are limping to the line. The Swans are just like, oh, we just want this to end as well. 
We've had six straight losses. The Swans, I say, we as a Swans fan. They fade in the second half, but in the last three weeks, they have played uh, Brisbane and North kind of hard. Yeah, they yeah they, makes it hard. They, yeah. yeah, they've had a pretty rough trot the yeah, last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's very hard to get that. it out of your defensive half when it's like yeah. Ali Anderson, Jazz Garner, Livy Birch. Yeah. You know, everyone else, Soph Conway, just but hi. <laughs> but also with the six straight losses, how do you think their um, their confidence is going into this game? I think they're up and about knowing they've got a team coming over from Perth who are going just as bad as them at the moment. They're Whoa. at home. They've had four straight losses, <laughs> but I'd home, still be Home ground advantage. Yeah. They, they, they're they going to rely on the big crowd at Henson Park. And how do you feel about Henson this Park? This is just another wow, week where Alex Henson is trying. <laughs> uh, Henson Park's beautiful. Tins on the hill. Tins on the hill. Tins grab, on the grab hill. Grab yourself a doozy on the hill. <laughs> yep. A, a what? A doozy. It's, oh, a, a, doozy. it's a seltzer. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Seltzer. Seltzer. Yeah. That would yeah. be nice if it was is a good weather yeah. up there. Doozy on nice the hill. A bit of a seltzer. Yeah. A doozy uh, so on this, the hill. This is going to be... <laughs> that a, sounds dodgy for some reason. Yeah. It sounds like doobie. Yeah. Oh, doozy. Well, it's it's the drink that uh, Isaac Haney, Will Haywood, oh. uh, Ollie Florent, they're all part owners of. No free plugs. No free plugs. Send us a case of doozy, boys. So this is going to be this, this game should be a, a bunch of fun because you're going to have Laura Gardner who just came back in is like I'm still going to win the best, Swans best and fairest despite playing She's seven awesome. games. Yeah, yeah. You've got Ella Roberts on the other side. You've got Drennan there, and then you've got Tanya Kennedy who's going to go. Hi Ella Roberts, you're going to have fun today. Mm-hmm. You reckon, yeah, Kennedy's going to Roberts most likely. I'd go to Drennan. Drennan because I think Ella Roberts has a way better footy brain than Tanya Kennedy, and that's where she'll get caught out, as we saw by Jazz Garner in the North. And Melbourne Drennan game. can be Ooh. really. Uh, Damaging as well. Like, oh, longer, yeah. Probably a long, long kick as because well. Because yeah. if Roberts decides to play at centre-half forward, uh, her footy brain will probably beat Tanya Kennedy's because if it's just in and around the footy, it's like, get footy, tackle, get footy, tackle. Yeah, she's Interesting. Yeah. hard to stop Kennedy. I'm going like, Drennan. I don't, I, yeah, go on Drennan. Okay, yeah. don't mind that. Don't mind so that. this is just a like a battle of which team can somehow kick a score. Yeah. Because both teams have struggled throughout the year. you got Hosko down in the forward line for West Coast. In the Swans, Privatelli needs three goals to bring up 50 in the league. Oh, cool. Uh, I assume Montana Ham's going to be playing. Maybe play her on the ball a bit more. Yeah. So interesting Also, game. teams can uh, try a few things. Like you said, Montana Ham on the ball a bit more. Maybe they'll try and they can, Robert, they like, can throw Lucy McAvoy forward. Yeah. She's shown throughout the year oh, when yeah. she goes forward. She can kick a couple of goals as well. She's just a great player. You can pretty yeah. much play her anywhere. And she's she's yeah. got the goal now as well that you just like when she's in the forward line, she's got that craft as yeah, well. Yeah, 100%. So, then you got the Hamilton sisters. What are Cynthia and Alexia going to do as well? Like they've been popping up doing a job. The Ruck's going to be the biggest issue for the Swans because obviously with Smith going down last week, yeah. it helped. Yeah. Yep. So anyway. Uh, big question this is, can either team jump into the finals in 2025? Because we've seen the improvement from West Coast at the start of the year. Um, the Swans had the tougher draw from making the second week of finals last year yeah, and think. haven't had, they haven't had, uh, what, Malloy, Gardner, and uh, uh, who am I thinking of? Uh, I can't remember. They've had a lot of injuries. I, I, Morphet. I, Morphet, all, yeah. All three, they, yeah. They're some all, all three of them didn't play a game together this year. Okay. This season, that's, I'd be giving that's the... very interesting stat. Yeah. Well done. I'm giving the upside to West Coast this season, but just the way they play. Yeah. But you're right. I think Sydney's list has a better chance of them making finals next year. Yeah. But I don't think either of these teams are going to make finals at least for another two I reckon, years. Well, because no, you've got Frio <laughs> But you need, there, need to remember stats, there. guy. They're going to get the tougher draws tougher next draw, year, yeah, whereas yeah. the Swans, they're yeah. going to be in that bottom six yeah. part of the thing because they're yeah. going to finish at best, what, 14th? Yeah. And no matter what, they're going to get an easier draw next year. West Coast, if they lose this, will fall down to 14th, yeah, 13th, true. 14th yeah. and get an easy draw next year. Like, I know Daisy Pierce won't want to do that, but in the back of her mind, like, if I can get a couple of easier she games. She will 100% want try to win. Try to win. Yeah. 100%. Every, every you team, can't, every yeah. team you is can't, You that. can't not. Yeah. And then it's like, it's like when you tip against your team. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, if yeah. they win... My team won, yeah. but yeah. if they True. lose, it, it I win. It wouldn't, yeah. Shock, yeah. it wouldn't shock me if there was a couple of magnets thrown around in this game for but both teams. You might as yeah, well okay. in the last game, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. to try a few things. And then it might work out for the best. And play really attacking style footy. And yeah. the, the, there's been good scores at Henson Park all year for both teams. Yeah. Like the Swans kick on average five or six goals a game there. West Coast can get there and kick goals because they transition very well. So yeah. anyway, dying on the hill because neither of you are tipping them. Up the bloods. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, girls, get it done. You need that tip. You definitely need that tip. I'm going West Coast. Uh, yeah, Wallace Marara by all I say. It's gonna be a really close one by goal. I'll all say. the games at Henson Park have been close this year. Yeah, yeah. like it's produced very good finishes. Yeah, yeah. true. I'm choosing Wallace Marara. There we go. Marara. 
Marara? Yeah. Wallatidja Marara. God, I can't wait for Charlie Robot. We'll play Coast. for the Swans next year. West Coast by 12. Nice, nice. Yep. Speaking of Charlie Robottom, Gold Coast travel Woo! to Arden Street yes. to take on North Melbourne. Hey, kids, have you ever seen a dead body? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, once. We're Is talking it... about death a lot today. Yeah. Yeah. No, no <laughs> Daisy Darcy, no Lucy Single for Gold Coast against North Melbourne who are just really Gotta bring the Apparently boom. They're bring pissed. the boom. They're pissed off because their percentage is in over 300 still. So, yeah, you're up against a team, the only team that hasn't conceded more than 200 points in the league this year. They are the best defensive team by about 60 points in the league at the moment. Gold Coast are the second worst defense in the league this oh. year. And they are and the, the best offense as well. Fifth fifth worst attacking team in the competition. This is going to be a bloodbath. Good luck, Gold Coast, because North Melbourne yeah. are not going to rest players. They are going to, yeah. in the words of Jim Ross, they're going to stomp a mud hole and walk it dry. Well, this is on track to be the best unbeaten season ever. So you got Brisbane who did it through a uh, seven-game season. Yeah. And this is obviously 11-game season. Obviously, North had the draw. Why did we have to draw that <laughs> random game in the so way to weird. Geelong? Because it would have been beautiful. It could have been 11-0. and 0. Don't want to get in my head of myself here, but I think, yeah, they're going to get the job done. They've got three of the league's top 15 goal kickers. Everyone else has sort of one player in that top 15, top 20. Mm -hmm. North, I think, have six in the top 22. Like, it's unbelievable the amount of goal kickers they have. Uh, and then, as Alex, you mentioned this, leading pretty much all the main categories in stats in the league. North are just all over it. Yeah, this one's this one I think might be one of those games that's really hard to watch. Um, if you not if you're a North fan. <laughs> well, well I think even, even the one against Essendon, are, I felt I it actually, didn't feel good. Yeah, but you know most what? most footy fans like watching competitive yes, footy. That's yeah, true. That's that's right? true. I'm actually because uh, my partner is going to a dinner with her family on Saturday night. I might head to Arden Street. Oh. I need to try the hot chips at Arden Street. Oh, you haven't tried the HC's well, at Arden Street? Oh, yeah. I haven't been to Arden Street. They actually have good uh, hot chips because there's a big Sivlaki van there. It's beautiful. Oh, 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 I know what Alex is doing, doing for dinner. Doing doing dinner. Language. The Sivlaki van and the hot jam donuts at Arden Street. Nah, I don't, I don't oh, need to do the hot beautiful. jam donuts. Beautiful. You don't do a hot jam oh, donut. No, I, I'm, not go I, I'm getting the Sivlaki My family used to have okay. North Wind. You get yeah. damn donuts. That was my. Tell you what, uh, really? Before I was alive, that was my like, and uh, that was when North, even before I was alive, were really bad. And, I was gonna and say, no matter what, all the kids were like, "Can we get donuts, mum and dad?" No, like, no, we win. <laughs> so lucky we don't do that anymore because I wouldn't be getting uh, many donuts. If you go to Arden Street, <laughs> can you get a hot jam donut? And then you have to record yourself eating it, and you're not allowed to lick your lips once. <laughs> not one lick. Not they're even just, a. They're not just even jam a, and sugar going everywhere. Not could, even a. I can I can lick my mustache because that's not. Can't lick your mustache. That sounds no, like the, the mustache is on your lip. You yeah. can't lick it. That sounds like the uh, the sprite challenge where you got to scull a sprite without. <laughs> oh my god! Have you seen the video of that guy trying to scull it? He's like, oh my god, oh my god! Does the big boom? Burn, the burn runs like away a boom. and runs straight into his garage. One of the best videos of all time. <laughs> Speaking of things running headfirst in a garage and falling over. Gold Coast are going to get pumped by 83 points. 83? I 80, had 75. Jeez, I haven't even thought about this. What was North's most? I think North's most was 70. Yeah. So it's going to be more than that. 72. So a record margin could be on. Oh, that's what just brutal. What is the record margin? I think I found there was a 100-point margin. What? Really? Yeah, I think like Melbourne beat someone like 106 to 4 or something. Oh, well, that's a lot, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it is doable. It is definitely doable. I'm um, sorry. And Gold Coast, we have talked about it. It has gained legs. Uh with Charlie Robottom allegedly wanting out on that club. It makes sense. Yeah. I feel for her because she has to put so much out and then a lot of other people aren't coming with her. But I also feel for Gold Coast. It happens in the men's. Well, well, Charlie, no one wants to stay at Gold Coast, GWS. If, well, so oh, Charlie sad. was the number one draft pick picked out of here. She is here from here in Victoria. So mm. yeah, but I like no it. word on where she's going to go yet. Yeah. Obviously, the Swans are going to try given family connection. But Victorians, bring her back home. She's only, mm. what, 21, 22. That's going to cook. Can you the... imagine if the Swans have Roy Bottom next year? Ooh. In their midfield? Mm. That would be yeah. pretty cool, yeah. That would be very nice. I actually love that. Yeah, I know. Finish that... low, get Roy Bottom. Well, because that's the thing. Low, so, then Roy. Well, we can talk, oh, we can talk about that here because, obviously, I looked. I was having a look at it just seeing because it's like, is it free agency? What's the trading? Yeah. Because, obviously, it's a bit different in AFLW with free agency and that. Yeah. It's, it has to be a trade. The Swans have pick five. just like, there you go. Take it. Sure. Take it. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll take Rowie. Yeah, we'll you take Rowie for pick five because I saw last year, there's a reason why Gold Coast are bad. So this is a trade that they did last year. Like they were so, there was an 11 team mega trades. So I was going through all the history last night, just trying to. Wait, in the women's? Yeah. What? So Gold Coast that. last year gave Lauren Ahrens, Jasmine Smith, pick 14 and pick 38. In return, they got Katie Lynch, Charlotte Wilson and pick 44. They've, I think Katie Lynch is injured, yeah. and they've been a bit unlucky with that. But, yeah, they the, got rid of some very good then players. Then the Swans gave up yeah. pick 55 for Giselle Davies. Okay, okay. Like, I, I've just figured out why Gold Coast. Like, I was just looking at going, oh, yeah. Wow. I, we did say they got pilfered. Oh, my God. They just, what yeah, is yeah. wrong with their drafting? So, yeah, 
But if they take pick four, they are the number one draft pick in their academy who looks like a combination yeah, of... Yeah, the Ruck. Uh, Aaron, yeah, who looks like a combination of Aaron Phillips, Dean Cox, Chris Judd, and Daisy Pierce. Okay. Yep. That's a big cost. <laughs> Leads, hit outs, tackles, clearances, and possessions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She's, she's awesome. I saw that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Check out the AFL women's TikTok. Like, oh, my God, she looks awesome. Yeah. Yep. All right. Carlton and Essendon, Icon oh. Park, 7.15 p.m. We talked to Lily Goss. They're pumped up to get the job done just for themselves, but also to do the funniest thing ever, and that is cost Essendon a final spot. How are you feeling? <laughs> Grr. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to say how the fan base is feeling, mate. Yes, it is. Are you nervous? Think, Are you nervous? Or no. Not yet? No, that's fair. I'm trying not to be too committed okay. to it, Stats Guy, because I get fair, quite emotional about the footy. I get very emotional about, about the bombers. my bombers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we've seen um, this movie so many times. <laughs> In the men's, yes. Oh, yes. it's so funny. Oh, my darling bombers, please. And like, Come on. I love the Bombers. They're fun. You, got... you do not love the Bombers. No, 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 no. That's not true. Right. I've heard you say you hate them in the men's, but maybe not in the women's, yeah. The players, like fans of them. Bonnie Too Good. Bonnie Too Good. Maddie Gay. Legend. Chris Marcus. Maddie Gay. Nance Gorn. Bannister. Fans. <laughs> follow, a couple of them follow us on Instagram as well, so they're supporting us. So for that, you support us, I support you. As a club, <laughs> it's just hilarious. As people, great. <laughs> Essendon somehow losing this to Carlton, who have been slightly underwhelming this year would be pretty funny because they've thrown everything last week at Richmond probably could have should have won that game a couple of injury concerns coming out of that one obviously like how's your ruck gonna go this week like you've got no you've got a lack of height yeah we do we absolutely do have a lack of height um and we've also lacked a lot of skill over the um over the season as yes. well your good is good your bad I think is good. will be yeah it's inconsistent. They're they're like a Geelong, very yeah. inconsistent. Can string together really good footy. Like draw against Richmond. Yeah, big surprise. Like yeah. I, most people would have tipped beating Richmond. Melbourne by seventy yeah. points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's the Essendon story. Losing round one by sixty, beat Melbourne by seventy. Yeah, draw with Richmond at Dreamtime. Bonnie too good, up and about, found form. Thank like, God. She yeah came back from injury. I had to have a couple of weeks. And she absolutely the other had thing, to. They didn't get it down to her in the forward line for no. a couple of weeks when she came back. Because you know tough. what she did? She got up the ground. She got up guy. the ground. Yes, she got up the ground. And yeah, if the, the more she gets of the ball, the more the chances that Bombers 100%. have to win. So she's awesome. Uh, yeah, Essendon midfield as well. Won won the clearances last week against Richmond. Yeah, you got Nance Gorn and uh, Prasparkas. But it's going to be a dream fun match duo. Dream fun match up against uh, McKay and Shira yeah. as well yeah. because they've been in really good form as well. Yeah, yeah. shira has been awesome been recently great. as well. Yeah, and yeah. McKay's always they've been both been kicking goals superstar. from midfield, which we, yeah. which we love as well. We love midfielders who we kick yeah, goals. We do. Score board impact. <laughs> yes. yes, yeah, we love it. So the big question of this is: Are Carlton going to do the funniest thing ever? Because it's the question for this game. Like, as a fan, take out your, like, obviously, yes, professional, you do your boundary reporting for Fox Footy, you do this show. Give us full Nuffy fan mode right now. <laughs> How are you feeling as a full-on fan of the Bombers? Uh, like, disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. Could it could have done better this season? That we yeah, saying? I think it that we could. I feel like they've been a little bit um, complacent. I love Natalie Wood, too. She's I think she's an incredible coach and leader and mentor and everything like that. Um, so, yeah, I just I don't know what's happened to Essendon. This season, um, obviously, there's been injuries like injuries, everyone has yeah, had, yeah. but just it, we've said it from the beginning. It's that basic skill level. Like, don't even talk about the game and structure and everything that you're trying to play. That if you can't kick and mark, just like footy's it's a pretty simple game. It's pretty yeah. simple. You can make it as complex as you like. You know, when you get to the Hawks and you you got Dan Webster as yeah. your coach, you do do what you like. Or you just go to what Daisy did for West Coast. We're going to kick. We're going to run. We're yep. going to take grabs. Yeah, true. So I think if Essendon can focus on that kind of stuff, um, the rest will come. If you know? two good players like she did last week, Essendon will win. Oh, you going both going Essendon? I'll tip Essendon. They they just they can't lose this. Honestly. Well, well you've just jinxed it. I would, <laughs> I would find it funny, obviously, if they did lose this game and miss the final. Yeah. I need to catch up on the tips, so I am going the funny. Okay. Blue's upset. I think yeah. they can match well, it. you're midfield. a North fan as well. So. No, but I, I was actually going to tip Essendon, and then I was like, well, I need to catch up on tips. But I genuinely think it would be a really close game. Yeah. The Blues, when they're playing at their attacking best, if they come out and go, all right, we're going to play attacking, we're going to play pressure footy, that's when they beat Geelong. That's when they've beaten other teams. I just want them to play really attacking, really direct footy. Because yep. that's what can catch Essendon off guard. And uh, I reckon they're going to get the win. Right on. Let's get across to Sunday. <laughs> RS, RSEA Park, Moorabbin. Euro Roke, St Kilda Saints, take on the Brisbane Lions. 
Wait, St Kilda beat Brisbane last time they played? Yeah, surprisingly. It was a very, I had a look at that game, very random, by 21 points. They, I think Warball went off. Uh, that was a while ago, though. Yeah, it might have been two mm. seasons ago. Yeah. So, still, I, Brisbane, honestly, Brisbane were all awesome. Yeah, I, was yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember what happened last week, so I honestly can't remember this. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm having just a mental blank at the yeah. moment. It's got so much on. <laughs> um, so, St Kilda. I'll have a look. They won a couple of games to kick off the year. They beat the Swans and the Suns. Oh, no, it was sorry to interrupt. It was in 2020. It was last season. Was it? it the round nine uh, last season, 55 to 34. They just fired up uh, St. Kilda and uh, got the job done. Wow. Was that when I said Brisbane can't win the flag? I remember saying that at one point We had last a big year. tip, I'm pretty sure. Like, I remember for some reason we talked about this game. We're like, yeah, Brisbane are locks for this game. And then Saints just came out. And, and that was the start of like their forward line sort of clicking. Wardlaw sort of put okay. her name on the map a bit more. Very random game. So I don't think that's going to happen again, but we no, can get into, I definitely it. We can get into that. Right, it's going to um, happen. Hopefully, Marab and the Ferris wheels up and about again because <laughs> it's final ga- final game of the year. Yes. Uh, the Saints need to show show their fans something going into the offseason because yep. they started well, doesn't look as good now when you think about who they played. Yeah. And they've just slowly gotten more St. Kildary throughout the year. Yeah. Like they had the fun game at Frankston where they beat GWS. They looked great. Again, yep. it was GWS. So yep. they're like, they are. They are St. Kilda. Yep. When you think of what St. Kilda is across the history of time is exactly what they've given us this year. They mm-hmm. can look really good. They can look really bad and they can't do an in between. Yeah. Not wrong. Up against Brisbane who are up and about. They pumped the Swans last week. Three times this year, they've kicked over 60 points. Smith just kicking goals for fun at the moment. She's chasing the uh, leading goal kicker award. Yeah. Is y- there a chance she can catch Maloney, yes. do you think? Yes, Ooh. there is. Because I reckon Maloney will at least kick two against, uh, who are they playing? Adelaide. Oh. Yeah, Absolutely. this is what I mean. No, like, I think she'll kick at least one. Then one could be a could be a draw. So yeah. this is Taylor Taylor Smith's chance to catch up because St Kilda have shown throughout the year that they can leak leak a couple of scores. But you think Nikki Dale will be trying to lock this down and turn this into a scrap? If yeah. if it's like late in the game, they're already up by twenty. Oh yeah, points. you're looking for her. Are you just going? Where's Where's where Smitty? Where's Smitty? Yeah. Just where get, kick it to her for yeah. the leading goal. Yeah. You're looking for her, like yeah, that's yeah. where you like. If someone takes a mark fifteen meters out, you hope she just sprints past you. Him all over. Yeah, gaps over the top. <laughs> Most teams will say, "Oh, we're not even going to do that." But the players in the back of their mind might. Oh, hundred percent. It's in stuff. the back of their mind. Hundred percent. If 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 there's a margin on like they're four or five goals in front with five minutes to go, yeah, okay, you're trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure the game's killed off. Positive. Yeah. Positive for the Saints, I was going to say, is friend of the show, Tiana Smith, being really good. Third best uh, average tackles in the comp, 8.5. Yeah. yeah. Hitting the scoreboard lately as well. I think she's got two goals in the last like three or four weeks. Mm-hmm. Been really good. They just need a, a bit more scoring power. Like we've said that all year. I think the first two weeks are like, they're awesome, but then they played some crap teams. Yeah. And then they just need a bit more scoring power out of midfield probably, yeah. other than Smith and then other than Wardlaw. Just look, a bit few more options, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Gutridge was really good at the start of the year. Needs the lift for this game, I think, as well. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I think St Kilda have just been really lackluster at times. Yeah. They've lacked that um, confidence, as you said, like goal-kicking options yeah. and that kind of stuff as well. I just – I think they're going to get absolutely pumped <laughs> yeah. by Brisbane. That's Brisbane. I, I, th- I think one thing that will stop Brisbane as well is their accuracy. Mm-hmm. They haven't been kicking well – either this season. Um, I think against Gold Coast, what they kicked eight behinds, only six or goals. Or like 11, 12 Bulldog- last week Yeah, or Bulldogs, they kicked 15 behinds, 11. Like Ooh. you just like – you need to get up there, They're guys. They're giving us the full Joe. Yeah. Full Joe out of here. A few misses. <laughs> the true. JT. True, yeah. true. Uh, yeah. In a positive for St Kilda, I know it's not a positive because she's not playing, but Bianca uh, Jacobson didn't do her ACL. Yeah, she yeah. she wrote hey, on, um, on Instagram. Oh. I'd like to thank my ACL for holding up. Oh, that's a great that's yeah, a great yeah, yeah. post. Good job, it. yeah, good job, buddy. <laughs> well done, ACL. Oh, the Very way good. That, yeah. that photo was. Oh, so we got to remember that I haven't had Patrikios basically all year. Either. Yeah, that's, who's their best player? Yeah, yeah. that kind of sucks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So probably need to be a bit nicer to St Kilda, but uh, yeah. Can see, the big question in this game is: Can the Saints show us something in a game that means absolutely nothing to them? <laughs> yeah, probably not. Brisbane haven't put teams away that much in the last... They uh, haven't, have Did they? you not watch last before Sunday? Before last week, before last week, there was like a three or four game stretch where they had some pretty close games. One of them was the Q clash. So though. I don't think it's going to be more than like 25, 30 points in my opinion. Ooh. Brisbane but you by, guys might have a, a different... Brisbane opinion. by five goals. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying. Five goals. Okay, cool. Yeah. Nice. Game of the round, 3.05 oh. p.m. Oh. at the Swinburne Centre. It's Punt Road, not what we thought a couple of weeks ago, which was the Vitality Centre where Collingwood play. Richmond host... Hawthorne, this is Huge. a game. Yeah, I'm you really looking forward to this one. Second versus sixth, where if results go Richmond's way, they could be playing for a top four spot here. Hawthorne, double chance, lock, lock it in any. They are playing two weeks of finals no matter what. Yeah. They win this, 
they have a home final in week one. Mm. Where do they play their home final? That's my question because we don't know what grounds are available for finals. Oh, oh really? Don't we don't know. We, we don't play the. They don't play the home games. They're not going to be at Funky Town. I yeah. don't know if they're down in, the road. Yeah, like, I'll skip I think they are. Yeah, yeah. if they're going to be at Franger, if we're just okay. playing them at Icon Park, I got no idea what's okay. happening. Oh yeah, because in the past they have played at Icon Park. Yeah, mm. yeah. Icon Park's the go-to. It is really cool to watch. Leave then. Icon Park clear for anything, anytime for anyone in AFL. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, this this is massive. So you've obviously got Hawthorne who are playing great football. Richmond coming back from dream time last week. Bodie returns for the Hawks. Yeah. Big, Big tick. Yeah. Boom. She can kick a few goals. Bring the boom. Yeah. yeah it should be awesome. Mon Conti was electric last week. Hosko's hamstring is just gone. So, see you later. Yeah, yeah. See ya, pal. Sorry. That hopefully it's not too bad, but you never know. They are hamstrings. Uh, what was it with the knee? Who did their knee? I've just completely spaced on that. Someone went down. Uh, I can't remember, but that's okay. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I've just completely spaced. Uh, Beck Miller's got a test with her hamstring as well. Yeah. Big in defense for her. So that's a big worry because Hawthorne's forwards are just nuts. Hawthorne's yeah. forward. We've, we've talked about uh, Gilroy just being awesome. I was g- talking about Hipwell the other week. Yeah. Right, she's really stepped she's up. Three goals inc- yeah. the last, uh, across the last two weeks. Yeah. Kick one goal, two last week. Very unlucky not to have a couple of goals. But yeah. she gets a lot of chance to go from forward pressure. Then, yeah. then she'll, she has a second and third efforts. Very underrated. And I've realized, yeah, realized yeah. that the last couple we, of weeks. We talk about North Melbourne's scoring prowess. Hawthorne a second to them by 17 points this season. Mm. Or 27 points, sorry. Mm. So true. pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. They're, they're, they're they elite. Yeah, in, in in the goal kicking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So then, and then obviously you look you look at you look at Richmond. You've got Katie Brennan who who could do some stuff. You've got Yassir who's popping up and doing yeah. a bit here and there. I wrote down Sheeran if she plays. So I'm hoping that she plays. Well, technically, right now she is. Technically, so right now she is. She's been picked well, they until haven't, the thing, they haven't yeah. done the um the appeals tonight. Oh, okay. Because the game's not till Sunday. But yeah. she's been averaging 21 disposals and a goal the last five yeah. weeks. So you, know, you talk about Conti, you talk about Mackenzie Egan. Oh, yeah, Mackenzie. And Sheeran, I think uh, La. It was the last season the season before? She was always a half back, and yeah. then they've put her more in midfield and awesome. Yeah. She's taking off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, been awesome. I can't I just, wait. I, th- I just think Hawthorne is going to be too strong. Really? I, I yeah, love I Richmond. Agree. Jazz I Fleming lo- running out of the middle, oh, pill in hand. Yeah, she's she's really like come a long yeah. way this season. I know she's always been really good, but yeah, she's still she's pretty come, young, isn't she? Yeah, she's come extra strides this season. Um, yeah, they're just they're just too strong in in every area of the ground, and I yeah. just don't think Richmond have um, the smarts and the skill um, to really put too much pressure. Yeah, on. I Conti's going to crash tackle you. Uh, <laughs> no, they. I agree. I with love Brian. you, Mon Conti. I love you, but actually, Grace Egan Hawks, can do it. The Hawks are up here, and Richmond they're just, just they're underneath. just underneath the I Hawks agree. in all of those levels, and I don't think that they've got the game plan or the structure that is going to outsmart the Hawks with where they are right yeah, now. Yeah, the draw against Essendon for Richmond worried me a little bit. Like, if you put Hawthorne in that game, I don't see them – I see them winning by, like, four goals against Essendon. As people have said, Hawthorne hadn't beat a good team till they beat the Ds last week. They played one good team before yeah. that. They got pumped by Adelaide. You can only mm. beat who's ahead of you. I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so you know. The big question of this is the winner of this game. So whoever wins, are they the danger team? Because the winner 100%. of this is going into finals, going, we can beat anyone. Yeah. Yes. I no, I agree. Because you got outside of would you say North and Brisbane, you go yeah. Who's that next sort of tier? You'd say yeah. Hawks, Adelaide Richmond. are there. Adelaide, yeah. But I think one of these teams could beat Adelaide on their on their day. All right. Yeah. yeah. Tip it. Go on. Hawks. Hawks by fifteen. Hawks by 25. Oh, 25. Mm. Katie Brennan, best on ground. Oh, Richmond he's got the upset. <laughs> it's going to be a you good game. you got to chase it. you got to go. you got to go hard on the up wins. <laughs> yeah, but I'm you also. to be aggressive. Yeah, I'm going for it. Let's get across to Albertson Oval. Yata Pulte, the Port Adelaide Power, take on the GWS Giants. The Giants limping towards the line. Port Adelaide won the last minute between the two teams by 10 goals. Uh, Yata Pulte can technically still miss the finals if they get pumped and no if chance. results go against yeah. them. Let's be honest, that's not going to happen. Nah. We talked about the issues that GWS have, not just on the field with their game plan, but off the field behind the scenes. We t- talked to Caitlin Serhoy on Monday. Go, was awesome, go check yeah. that chat out. That was a great chat. Got right into it. Talked about the life moving across from Perth to uh, Western Sydney. Obviously, a bunch of injuries are going on there at the moment. And I just think that this is just like GWS. It's just like, oh, my God, can we just end? Yeah. yeah. They are ready. They're, they're, you look at all the teams that are playing, like Collingwood obviously ready for the season to end. Gold Coast, GWS. That's like the level. Whereas West Coast and Sydney are like, yeah, one of us can win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. GWS just struggle to track back a little bit. They've got 
The new players in their midfield. Their game yeah. plan isn't working. And then you've got Port, who have a lot of players that can kick long. So just say GWS push forward. They can kick it over. And yeah. then the speed of like Derek, Goody, even Houghton yeah. for her size can yeah. have speed like on the counter attack. So but she's just elite with the footy. Do you oh, know what so I mean? Their she kicking can, is so good. Yeah. If she's in any one on one contest, mm. there's just no way that you're beating her. Yeah. Like the, the amount of like great footy qualities that Houghton has is crazy. You've got strength, great kicking, great. Like speed and then power, every leadership, got, great leadership, facial reactions exactly. to mark of the year. Taken yeah, in front of yeah, yeah, great teammate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not wrong. Yeah, but yeah, oh, this is going to be a tough one for GWS. Um, yeah, just but through... GWS has shown that they can play good footy. I Fair. know. That's I what keep I talking yeah. about it. No, you're right. But watching them against Hawthorne down in Frankston, yeah, they they ran rings around them at their own game, and I know that it was only for one quarter, but oh, it was almost a oh maybe a. Quarter, quarter and a, and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quarter and a bit. Give them 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> quarter and some change. Yeah. Um, they, they just, they have that potential. I think what they're missing, which they had that week, was like the fire in the belly. Mm. Where is your, um, yeah, that fire, Tenacity that the ball, want yeah. that, you know, to go and hunt. They're not, they're not hunting. That's why they're I put like that in, surviving. The, in the big question was, can they bring the fight like they had, did against Hawthorne? They did it earlier in the season in their first couple of games as well. They haven't shown it enough. They haven't shown it yeah. enough. Similar to Sydney where the first half you're like, oh, they're all right. They're in this game. And then they just fade away a bit because the game plan goes out the window or they're not. Yeah. It's a game stars. plan, structure, yeah. like Star fitness. Star players, I think, as well. But, yeah, they're very young, I think, yeah. as well. That doesn't help. Parker and Beeson need, need to have big games. But you have a look at. They do but every they week. Do. They do every yeah. single week. 22 know, plus the disposal problem. averages. Who are the, you know. Bits and pieces in behind the team that are going well. To usually, if I'm not just saying this because friend of the show, but Sir Hoy was that sort of next midfielder yeah. that stepped up this year. But unfortunately, she I've really expected more out of Pauga this year as well. Mm. It hasn't really sort yeah. of stepped up. Yeah, yeah. It's just I'm just looking down this GWS list. I'm like nothing really. Like is, is Rika like she could do a bit more and as well. Zrika has the potential to be a yeah. super elite, yeah. amazing. Oh, Dowd's dropped off a little yeah. bit. Oh, yeah, she, ha oh, she bit. has Kendall a little bit. Yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. but still been strong. So put this on the table. If Port Adelaide win this by eight plus goals, are GWS looking for a new coach next week? Ooh, Ooh. that's a big, big, big question. Um, Interesting. Because I'll say... they're going to, they're going to, I'd say yes. I'd say yes. They're technically speaking, but if they get belted and Collingwood pull out the upset of the season, they're a chance of finishing last with one win. Mm. And they drew to the Gold Coast. That's yeah, that's not good. I, I I'll agree with you that I'm not coach advocating like you know. No, like, I know what you're saying. Fired, but it's like there comes a time where you need to cut ties. Like, what, what the, are we doing? Either yeah. way, there'll be some changes. Might even be like positional changes yeah. or yeah. or staff changes because there will be changes. Sorry, right? Most of the time, it comes from the top. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's a lot of administration staff in a football cl club that are oh, above the coach, um, which I think don't get looked at. Enough, but uh, the top of the team is the coach. Yeah. So if your team ain't no good, see ya. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Porter, uh, yard to Pulsey, sorry, by 63 points. Oh, 63, 63 Alex. There you go. They did better by 58. Well, wow, you like. are trying to win the tipping competition. No, well, <laughs> this, is, this is the third worst defense in the competition. Fair so. enough. Yeah. Yeah. What okay. Are what are you going, Brony? I'm going yard to Pulsey by. Uh, 36. 36. Six, six is a 36. I think GWS will put up a fight in the first half. So Yata Pulti, the power by 30, I'll say. Just a cool. nice even 30. All right, Fremantle Oval, while you'll up, take on the Western Bulldogs, 7.05 p.m. to bring an end to the home and away season. This game could have some stakes here given if uh, Kawana and Richmond both lose. While you'll up could be playing for a top four spot. Mm. The little engine that could. I love that. I love that for while you're up. That, playing, is, that is huge. Playing, that is huge because for, they've had a great season. They're yeah. playing for a double chance or a home final because we assume Yartapulti are going to win big. If Richmond can somehow beat Hawthorne uh, and Yartapulti have already won and Kawana have won, while you're up, we'll need to win to guarantee a home elimination final. Yeah. This might sound weird. I'm more scared of some other teams around while you're up. Uh, the Dockers than I am, even if they make top four. As I, I, as I keep saying, they've Stats had a man, few weird losses. They, like are, they lost to Carlton. They are the little team that could. The, yeah. They are the little team that could. Yeah, yeah they, they, but they have a team. very fun <laughs> team. Like they've got a lot of guns. They so. want to win this and travel because they're unbeaten on the road this year. Yes, I okay. don't think they're making top four at all. Because you, you're relying on on Kawana and Richmond both losing. Oh yeah, true. 
Yeah. Yeah, you think one of them are going to win. Oh, it could. They Actually, could, could lose. Yeah. Richmond could lose to Hawks and then Adelaide could Your lose. Your top four is going to be Kangaroos, Hawthorne, Brisbane and Kiwana. So but you know, you tip, you tip Geelong. Yeah. Because then if while you're up with they finish fourth. I tipped along but they could still so hold that on. something splits you and me. <laughs> okay, okay. But you think the top. Okay, that's fair. That's anyway, I think that's the top four. Okay. The dogs. Uh, someone yelled at me at TikTok on, uh, during the week when I was like, ah, the dogs have shown us something. It's like, yeah, isn't that what you wanted? Yes. Yes. We've been talking about this for <laughs> yes. ages. Yes. That's Show- what I've been looking because I was like, the dogs are fun? Question mark? Can we call yeah. them the Showtime dogs? Like yeah, Showtime Lakers do it again in the, in the basketball. You. Showtime dogs. If they can do it three weeks in a row. Anyway, they've just gone, you know what? Screw this. We're just going to kick the footy, score some goals, have some fun. Yeah. A little bit of boogie tonight. <laughs> They're going to be in Perth for their Sunday that session. That is so old. Head across, be boogie boom. <laughs> boogie tonight. Head across to Fremantle for some tins on the pier afterwards. Good time. Tins on the pier. <laughs> Get good fish and chips there too. Oh, nice. Um, so, yeah, while you're up, though, they'll be looking at this going, this, this this is a chance for us here. We can really cement our top four spot or yep. get the home final, which is going to be massive. Playing the last game of the season and not having to travel in the first week of finals would be massive. Their defense has been great. Gab Newton has oh, pick up of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Well, probably up there, 17 yeah. disposals, six tackles per game. As you said, Huge. Their, their defense, third in defense. Yeah. And this isn't a bad uh, thing at all. They're eighth in offense, which is which is fine. But I think they need to lift that offense a little bit heading into finals. Like yeah. they'll, they'll want to kick like a 50 plus score here because they've they always around that 25 to 30 mark and they just scrape over the line with yeah. their defense. I think if they want to get some confidence in the finals, they got to get above that 40 plus mark just to go, all right, we can kick a big score. Obviously, they've had lots of injuries in the forward line, but yeah. yeah. Gab, so, Gab Newton yeah, has been so good in defense. Amazing. Ash Brazel is a test with the ankle, so we'll see how long potential if there's coming back or not because it's got TBC slash test, so good stuff. Oh, TBC slash test. That's really, yeah, really helpful. So uh, Tara nice. Stribley and Maddie Scanlon are tests as well with concussion and ankles, so I'm going to assume Ash Brazel isn't playing because yeah. the TBC doesn't help. The TBC doesn't fill me with confidence. <laughs> no. Um, while you're up, are going to need to play their best footy to beat the dogs. Okay. And be- the dogs are I like agree. a little dark horse. Yeah. Because they can actually string some pretty good footy together. When they play attacking footy, yeah. yeah. They've got no one coming back from injuries as well. Everyone's out for the season for them. Like, their injury list. Oh, it's huge, isn't it's it? It's good players. Aaron's, Blackburn, and uh, like Alfie, your mate. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of their top sort of five to ten players are injured. So that's just a bit brutal. Uh, Woodley is one that stepped up for the dogs though the last three yeah. or so weeks. Kicked a goal the other week. Test, uh, really good forward pressure. Test with the sore calf. Oh, no. Every player that I'm like, oh, yeah, the, I think every team has that. It's like, oh, they're getting really good form. Oh, no. you're going to get injured. I really hope uh, she plays because I think she's provided really good forward pressure that they didn't have in the first half. Yeah, of the season. Hyphenated Western Turner turning into excitement machine. Yes, yeah. very exciting to watch. So, if she, yeah, if she's on the park and, and not... Did you call her hyphenator? Yeah, the, the hyphenator. hyphenator. The hyphenator. <laughs> I, I really like enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, back, yeah, back on the park, kicking goals, just... Creating chaos. Is she injury free? Is she technically you know, not she on the list? Little, she did a little ankle, ankle, ankle then she got that cork ah, last week, and then right. she just yeah, it's all right. Are you and, saying and, you're worried? Hopefully, it doesn't make it worse or anything. Yeah, yeah. I hope. Yeah. I agree. I agree. It's I like, don't know if she's going to be playing her best footy yeah. if she's got those niggles. Play out of the girls' way. Yeah. Okay. Fair you enough. love it. You uh, love her out yeah. of the girls' way. And then and then Griggy just flat around. You know what I'd do just for the fun game? Hey, Griggy. Want to go play in the midfield? Yes. Yeah. I don't know why, why they she wouldn't do that. She would love that. Just running through Can people. Can you imagine? Yeah. Just running straight through people. It's like the headless chook Zach Butters vibe when he first started playing midfield. That is Griggy. Yeah, 100%. And I love it. Getting the footy and just bursting out of She's going to give away 700 free kicks, but it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be, be electric. And yeah. my kick goal and get some yeah. chances. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that, she's she's gonna be huge. I just love watching it. So you look at the ladder for this one, and because you have a look at where the where the dogs are. So you've got Euro Rock on sixteen with Wallachish Marara, the dogs and Carlton all on sixteen points. So that is eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth. You look at that because the way the draw is done is one to six, seven to twelve, thirteen to eighteen. Currently, the dogs are in. Uh, they are in thirteenth position. Mm-hmm. But if we think St Kilda are going to get belted by Brisbane, if we think Wallachij Marara, that's a 50-50 game against the Swans. Yep. Carlton against Essendon, you know. I know it's not your thinking. This goes back to the West Coast one. Mm-hmm. Are the dogs, if they lose, they're like, oh, well, we tried. If they lose by a goal, ah, oh, shucks. I think they You're won't... not thinking, no, it, no. but in the back of your mind, like the people above Tam in like the footy admin department are like, wouldn't mind losing this one. Okay. To get the softer draw next year, I think get they might say back. that in like January when they're like, "Oh, this this 
new season draws yeah. or that, they won't be yeah. thinking that for oh, a long you're time. You're not saying yeah. it with the players, but there's people above that are not maybe, dealing with the players maybe. each day. I don't day. know if there is. They just want to get a win because it was similar to in a few of the men's teams down the bottom of the ladder. But the if one, you get a win, it gets the vibe going. Like, if they get three wins in a row mate, to end the season. you that, beat frigging Gold Coast and lost Harley Reid. Hey, you was, had one job all right, to was, lose, and saying, you would have got Harley Reid, the greatest draftee of this generation. All right. One job, <laughs> and then your team only won two games next year. We don't need him, mate. It's all good. We don't oh, my him. God. He's Gerald, ready. once again, show <laughs> the clip. We don't need Harley Reid. We're not putting that in. This is the AFRW show. Thank you very much. I know. All I'm saying is... No, they're not going to be thinking that. Even the higher-ups will just... They would really want to win, especially they the They want dogs. to win. That especially, is literally it. Won they four. want at, to win. At the start of the year, we were like, they'll win one four game. Is awesome they've still. won four. True. Yeah, and true. they've done very well. But they will absolutely want to win another game. I know game. what you're saying. Do you know how much draw, goes through a club when you're losing like that? Gerald, keep... Do not write down that time code. <laughs> he's, he, Dude, has, he was on it. He was like, Ooh. Yeah, what I'm doing is they've, they've, won, they've won their four games. They've won their <laughs> They wanted to win more than that. That's not enough. They're not there's gonna, five games to win. They want to win five They're not going to win this game, though. Ducks fly together. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Mighty Ducks yeah, reference. Oh, oh, Mighty, Ducks. Mighty, is, Mighty Ducks 2, the best Mighty Ducks. Yeah. I can't oh. remember Mighty Ducks. I only remember Mighty Ducks Sister Act 2 is they the best win the, Sister Act they win, they win the Goodwill Games. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they beat Iceland. they got that other guy. Yeah. They got the other guy yeah. who hurt his Adam. wrist. Yeah, they beat, they beat Gunnar <laughs> Stahl in the final. Yeah, because he does triple deep glove side and Julie the Cat Gaffney saves it. There you go. What John, a I love the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> Should we give Emilio a tip? Estevez, everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. Should we give a tip? Uh, yeah, well, t- uh, no, well, t- I'm looking at what, uh, while, while you're, you're up. up. While you're up, four goals. Ooh, four goals. Really? Wow. I think it's going to be pretty close. Yeah, they win this. I'm going to go close. It's going to be 10 points while you're up. I think they're just not there on the offensive end, so yeah. they won't blow them away. Cool. Yeah. While you're up, 12. Nice. All right, let's get into the big calls. Gerald, we're up to time down so we can get these cut up for socials. Stats guy, give us a big call for the weekend ahead. Oh, I already mentioned it. Carlton are going to upset the Bombers. It would be very funny to uh, that to happen. I'm sorry to say that, Bryony, but they're going to knock them out of finals. I thought we were friends. We are, but in terms of Bombers, I just can't relate to Business that one. associates. <laughs> yeah, no, we're more than that. Uh, but yeah, Sharar and McKay are both going to kick goals from midfield and Carlton are going to win. If we see each other on the street in the next Yeah, I'm just going to avoid week. you. Yeah. I'll would, look at your socials. You'll be, you'll be working Ronnie somewhere. Ronnie would kick your ass in a fight <laughs> no, too, I, by the way. Probably. Probably. And yours. Has the... Yeah, I would. A hundred percent. Is that a social short? No. Yeah, hundred percent. Ronnie's got the height, but also from the mean streets of Frankston. True. Would fight dirty. True. Mean streets of Frankston. I don't want to deal with that. Would no. you just kick him in the nuts? A hundred percent. Whoa, 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 whoa. That, that, you know, yeah. That's, yeah. hundred percent. Uh, we got there. Is that the big call? I don't know if this needs to stay in or get. No, I'm going to say it off air. Um, That's probably a good idea. My, my, um, my big call is um, Geelong are going to beat Kiwana. Oh, wow. knock, knock them out of top four, possibly. Yeah, possibly. possibly. Mm. Um, I'm telling Anne Hutchard you said that. <laughs> no, and I apologise, Anne. But I, this is what he's going to split my footy tipping. Okay, this is me playing well, Carlton have to aggressive, win for me yeah. aggressive attacking footy for me to win the tipping we love competition. That. No, love so that. clip that up <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Biggest winning margin of the season happens this Saturday at Arden Street when North Melbourne absolutely yes. pump the Suns. Boom. Record margin for the year, potentially of all time. I like it. Cool. Uh, keep an eye on how many goals North Melbourne kick. <laughs> uh, how Gold Coast go without a midfield and only Charlie Robertham. We feel bad for that. Uh, Friday night, obviously down at GMHBA Stadium with Geelong taking on Kiwana. That is a massive Seventh game. Seventh to tenth on the ladder. Keep yeah. an eye on the, the live ladder on the weekend. Live I have that ladder. in the corner, I'm sure. Also, Richmond and Hawthorne. Keep an eye on that game on Sunday afternoon. And, of course, Yarta Pulte uh, trying to shore up their spot as well as while you're up. There is only, I think, one game that means nothing this weekend. Keep an eye on the Bombers as they yes. beat Carlton. Yeah. So, yeah, there is one game where there are no stakes because, obviously, teams can go into different positions in the yeah. final eight. And you've got, obviously, Sydney and Wallachie Jamara just playing for pride. Mm. Woo! Pride round. We do love pride. Yeah, different we pride, are pride yeah. here. Go hang out in Newtown after Henson Park. It is a great time. Beautiful. Tins on the hill. Of course, it is the final week of Indigenous round as well, so make sure we support all of that, hence why we've been giving out the club's Indigenous names as well. So big thank you to Carlton as well for uh, coming on the show today, showing off that Indigenous Guernsey that Zach Williams' cousin designed, yes. obviously from Narandra, great part of Wiradjuri land where I am from. So yes. big shout out to the Blues for and Lily Goss. bringing that all throughout their club as well. Yep. A big thank you to you guys for jumping on. 
Thank no, you. thank what you. What a season. That was the last one for the regular season. I can't believe we're season. like here, like here for the oh. regular season. Oh, well, we've still got a review. Yeah. Yes. We've still and got a review. Got finals. We've got finals. Yes. We've got a, yeah, and we're into finals. Uh, good luck to you for the upcoming week, obviously. Fashion's oh on the field. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's going on? Yeah. So Fashion's check- on the field. You'll see me main stage on Derby Day oh. for, uh, yeah, I'll be singing with my band, Midnight Mix. So yeah. oh, cool. keep an eye on that. And come down and say hello to me at Fashion's on the field. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, awesome. good luck to your sleeping patterns. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, driving in from Frankston to Flemington. That is a bad yeah. drive. Actually, Mum's dropping me off. So oh, thanks, oh, very thanks, nice. thanks, 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 Mum. <laughs> thanks, Mum. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Stats Guy. Thank you. Shout out to Gerald behind the screen and Spence doing her job on the social medias as well. Remember to smash a like across the social media so you can see us filling in your footy gaps throughout the season as well as the upcoming off-season. We're going to be doing a bunch of stuff across the men's and women's uh, stuff as well. We have a bunch of content still to come from the ASICS content shoot that we did. We've been really busy. That's why we haven't dropped much of it. Anyway, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. It is AFLW Today. Just go to AFLW, AFL Today on YouTube. And, of course, wherever you get your good podcasts, leave a five-star rating, leave a review, hit the notification bell. So anytime anything we do comes out, you get notified. Yes. Of course, everything else. Cricket Today, Football Today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, and Hold All Tickets. We are literally in the busiest week of the year because we have EPL. It's everything happening at the moment. Cricket starting back. NBA <laughs> just started. Melbourne Cup Week. NFL is in the seventh week of the season as well. So it much. is ridiculous. Get around them like I'm going to get around the celebration I have when Charlie Rowbottom commits to the Sydney Swans in three weeks' time. Woo-hoo-hoo! That's a big three weeks' time. Putting happening. it out to no. the universe, out into the universe as well. And is me- she going to get papped? She's going to get papped oh, out, no. having a couple of meetings with the, uh, with the Sydney team. Or, yeah. or, you know, you just have a Zoom call and keep that stuff private. Yeah, like, smart. Honestly. That would be smart. <laughs> yeah. But a coffee would be nice. Yeah, or you're just catching up with your brother James. Yeah. True. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just no, like, that's brother and sister. Anyway, that what? is it. We'll catch you Monday for more AFLW today. Till then, look after yourselves and remember... Foot is back! <laughs>